the battle wheel. I left my friends at Kendrick's bound for the promised land. The grace of God upon me, the Bible in my hand. Around the throne of grace, he appoints my soul a place. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on this battlefield for my Lord. Say it. Say it. Hey, I'm on Pull this it. battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I would save him till I die. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Hey, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise a him that I, yes, I would save him till I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Let the church say amen. If we're just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time, say amen. Amen. The psalmist said, Let, make a joyful noise. Make a joyful unto noise. Unto the Lord. For he's the rock of our salvation. Yes, sir. The redeem or the say so. The redeemed or the say so. How many of you feel good about Jesus tonight? Shake a neighbor and a hand and say, neighbor. I feel good about Jesus. Oh, you didn't shake the right neighbor by the hand. Shake another neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel good about Jesus. I'm glad he woke me up this morning. I'm glad he started me on my way. Anybody glad this afternoon? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like to, anything dead belong in the cemetery. Tell your neighbor, wake up. We'll give you one more chance. Anything dead belong in the cemetery. Tell your neighbor, wake up. Joy bells keep me ringing in my soul. Oh, joy bells keep me ringing in my soul. I hear them joy. Woo, joy. Oh, joy bells. Yes, Lord, keeps me ringing in my soul. Oh, yes, Lord. I hear him say yes. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes, Lord. God bless you. I want to do some housekeeping. If you sing in the Hopewell Choir, would you stand? If you sing in the choir at Hopewell, come on this way. I want to, I like to start practicing for heaven now. Since I'm going to heaven, I like to start practicing now. 
And one thing about heaven, everybody gonna be singing together in heaven. So we might as well start practicing that now. Is that right? I wanna, Brother Deacons, where Deacon Guy? Bring me about two, three more chairs. I want the pastors, preachers, I know. Where's Minister Edwards? From Hopewell? I see you. You come on, Minister Edwards. Come on. Where's Minister Carlton? All right. We're going to sit it together. Tell them where you're sitting, soprano alto. the end there. What a mighty God we serve. Do you feel good? Plenty of good room. Sister Sherman is coming to welcome our visitors. You're not really visitors because you're in the house of God. Amen. Amen. I want to say Buick Rendezvous, and I'm not going to be doing this all night. A Buick Rendezvous, white color. Oh, P-E-L. <laughs> That's enough. Sister Sherman, a lovely lady, fine member of this church. You can come right here. Come on, and it's on. Okay, she says it's on. You can come right here. I'm so confused. <laughs> I just feel so good. I had a good time this morning. I just had a good time this morning. I'm still up there on cloud 13, and, and I don't want the devil to, and I'm looking forward to hearing Pastor Pierce preach today. He's a great preacher. And Hopewell is a blessed church. Hopewell is a blessed church. And First Baptist is a blessed church. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. Thank God. Well, Sister Sherman is going to come. I don't Already see. Here. <laughs> I'm going to sit down, but let me just do it this way. Sister Sherman going to come, and I don't see your Mr. Music yet. Hope will you see him? But what I'm going to do, a song, y'all going to come back every praise. Everybody know that. Every praise is to our God. Every praise. Sister Sherman. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy to see all of you here. This is a great occasion when you give the charge to the leadership of your church. You are allowing them to learn what they are here for, what their auxiliary is supposed to do. And that's a wonderful thing because we all need training and we most certainly all need leadership. So thank you all for coming and uh, joining with us in this occasion. We have a wonderful pastor, Reverend Ryan Patrick Johnson, he, he is 
a pastor extraordinaire. He truly is. There's no other like him. No more like him. And that's why we're going to make sure he stays here with us. But on behalf of our pastor and all the congregation, the members of this great church, and First Baptist truly is a great church. We welcome you. We welcome you here today. We are so happy to have you here with us. You should have been here this morning when Pastor showed out. But anyway, you don't know he might show out this afternoon too. So just prepare yourself for a great time in the Lord. And once again, I say welcome, welcome, welcome. Mr. Johnson, come help me. Yeah. 
every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Every praise, every praise to our God. Oh, God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. Oh, God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, God, 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 God. Oh, God, 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 God. Oh, God, 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 God. Yes, he is. 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 Every praise. Every word of worship. Every praise. Every praise, 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 one more time, every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put your hand together. Watson here. Give me, stop it right there. I got Mother Watson here. Where you from, Mother Watson? No, I'm talking about down in the south. You from the south? Louisiana. What that key is? Now see, I want to do this for my Mother Bolden. Every praise is to our God. I said every praise. See, I done made me a moan, Robert Earl. Is to our For my, for my seasoned saints. I told you I felt like having church tonight. I'm going to turn this preacher loose. But I just want to say it one more time. Every praise is to our God. How many of y'all believe that tonight? I said Flannery can take this to Pontiac. 
every praise. Take it to Ferndale, Reverend. It's to our God. One accord, every praise, every praise is to, I know you ain't never heard it like that. God bless you. We got a great preacher here tonight, one of God's greatest, one of God's greatest preachers is going to preach tonight. Did you hear what I said? I feel like it's a late night service at the National Baptist Convention. And I'm anticipating this great preacher. He is the pastor of the Hopewell Church. He the pastor of the Hopewell Church there on Ewald Circle. And I believe, I know he's proud to be their pastor. And I believe they're proud that he is their pastor. And not only that, he is a brother, Reverend White, Reverend Wadney White, my friend from the New Prospect Church. He's a brother, he's a friend, he's a preacher from his bones. He holds his own. Dr. Tony Booker is coming to get us ready for the message. And once he have come, the next speaking voice that you will hear will be that of the pastor, Kenneth Carlton Pierce II yeah. of the Hopewell Missionary Baptist Church. Why don't you receive him by saying amen? amen. Dr. Booker, is coming in her own way. Dr. Booker, you something else tonight. God bless you. Come on, let's give God a great big hand praise. I want to thank Pastor Johnson for the invite and my friend Antoine Peak for the services of love that he's shown me. How many know that uh, rededication, consecration, it takes on a commitment? How many we are fully committed to the charge that God has given you? Uh, if you got a uniform on, you need your hands should make went, went up. If you got a uniform on, your hands should go up and say, I'm committed. Let's lay your hands and say, I'm committed to this. Yeah. All right.
As you go down I-75, the signs that tell you where to exit at, it tell you where to get off at. It shows you uh, direction, what street is what street. Well, that's how God has given us preachers and teachers and evangelists right. and prophets so they can give us direction. And he dispersed those all over that land so we can get a word from the Lord. And they can give us sound teaching. So when we get off course, they can help you get back on the road right. Yeah. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me in the righteousness. Make thy way play. Before my face, come on, Ella. Teach me, Lord. Teach me in thy righteousness. May thy way play. Oh, before. Before my face, use me. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord, yeah, yeah. Use me in the righteousness. Make that way play. Before. Before. Abide in him, he will abide in you. Study God's word, oh, his word is so true. Just live for Christ and walk upright. And all of your matters I know, I know, oh, he will surely find. <laughs> season how to season you don't need no special reason no no but my God my God he's a God for all seasons and he's a 
Shall we pray, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Spirit of the Lord, fall fresh on us. Mold us and make us and then have thine own way. For God, you are the pot and we are the clay. And since you have me behind this sacred desk, that your people see absolutely none of me, but positively all of thee. Forgive us now, Lord, for all our sins, seen and unseen, known and unknown. It's in Jesus' name we pray. People of God, said amen. amen. Come on, if you really love God, give God some praise. That was just all right. Um, sound more like to me you had a crush on God and loved him. So let's try this one more time. The people that love the devil, be quiet. This side ain't saying that. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Let's try this again. The people that love God, give God some praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. 
Let us exalt his name together. Now, if someone is sitting on your row and ain't say nothing, shame on you for staying next to him. Amen? I don't know about you. I don't want to sit next to nobody that don't love my Lord. Amen. Give an honor to Christ Jesus, who's definitely the head of my life, to the great angel of this house, Pastor Johnson. Let's bless God for him on tonight. Amen. Amen. My friend and my brother, and to the fragrance of this house, First Lady Johnson, we bless you on tonight as well. Amen. Amen. And to these preachers and pastors who are present today, we thank God. Um, for you as well and to our associates who are present we thank God for you amen and um, this is a new place for us we've never been here before um, so some of you are looking at me I'm looking at you we're examining each other and then in a minute we'll be able to grade each other amen amen but just in case there's some single brothers in the house I understand this is the perfect place to find a wife I agree with you but let me show you where not to look at my wife won't you stand amen amen Amen. So keep on looking past that row. Amen. And we won't have no trouble. Ain't that right, D? Amen. Amen. To the greatest church in the city of Detroit, preachers don't get mad at me. It's all right. The greatest church in the city of Detroit, Hopewell, won't you stand? Amen. 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 God has blessed me to pastor some people who I love very dearly. Amen. And they show and return that same love. Amen. Amen. We won't hold you long. Those of you who have your Bibles, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. We're, you found it. If it is your custom, we ask that you would stand in reverence to God's word. Gavin Luke chapter 10 verse 17 and a few of the following when you have found it say amen. amen and it reads and the 70 returned again with joy saying Lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he said unto them I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be any means hurt you by any means hurt you Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't get too excited yet. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In the late 1990s, the Barna Group, which studied trends in churches, suggested that we was on the verge of a mega church movement. They argued that in the beginning of this century, we would see churches on the rise and on the grow. Yep. That more and more you would find common churches whose membership are in the thousands and whose budgets are in the millions. Yeah. Churches whose multiple ministries are attractive to this generation, and the same way Walmart and Super Walmart has cornered the market, that large churches, mega churches, would become a one-stop shop for all ministries. That they would find more and more members gathered in large churches, and in the growth of a mega church, in the growth of places where people gather for multiple services with multiple ministries and multiple thousands of members and multiple millions of dollars, the Barner Group argued that there would be two major challenges that large churches would have to face. The first was the message of its ministry. You will find in this era of growth in church that we have the fulfillment of Paul's prophetic probl problematic warning to his son Timothy. When he said the day will come when you will have people, people will not endure sound doctrine. I want to speak to those of you who dare to call tonight yourself minister, who dare to call yourself deacon, trustee, president, 
vice president, chair, co-chair, uh, whatever you call yourself in leadership, that there will be multiple temptations along this journey in leadership to develop you an itching ear th theology. As you take on this title and positions, I want to urge you that we don't need any more itching ear leaders. That what we need are those who are not ashamed to lead your ministries the way the Lord and according to biblical principles and precepts. The first challenge we face in this message of ministry is to be certain that we stand fast to the faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the second challenge we face are the characters of leaders that operate in the body of Christ. Uh, you, you will find that New Testament model of church plays itself out in Acts chapter 6, which I'm sure most of us know very well. It suggests that a problem arose in the early church, and, and the apostles recognized that we needed deacons to help solve the problem. That the, the New Testament model says that at bare minimum, that a bare minimum requirement for a church to operate effectively, it needs preachers and deacons. The, the, those who preach the word and then those who do the work. Oh, now, 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 as the church began to grow, other offices became necessary because now you can function without trustees. You can operate without ministry leaders and disciple group presidents. But at bare minimum, it's not a New Testament church if it don't have preachers. <laughs> Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. And deacons. Now, now understand this, that, that because you're a minister, because you're a deacon, a trustee, president, vice president, whatever you are, one thing you are not, and this is for sure, you are not the pastor. So you don't have a vision for the church because you're not the visionary. If you stay too quiet, I'm going to think you're guilty. You are a vision catcher. It's not your job to give your pastors any directions. And leaders, leaders in God's church, it's, 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 this is not a competition, but it's cooperation. Leaders shouldn't be seeking their own gain, but rather to assure God is glorified and magnified. It's not about your fame, it's about your faithfulness. God can never be glorified when there is schisms in leadership that is caused by poor characters of leaders. In a church like this that's favored and is growing and has multiple ministries and multiple ways to impact this very community, what you need most are leaders who have some level of immunity from the trappings of self-glory and self-success. We need leaders who can see strong programs and yet not be afraid of the day of small beginnings when something is going on and only a handful of folk show up to your program. We, we need leaders that are like the shepherd will leave the 99 to track down the one because they realize that one nurse, that one usher, that one choir member is just as important. Oh, man. We need leaders who, who as Ecclesiastes says, don't observe when to figure out when they will sow seed because you don't wait for perfect conditions to step out of the boat and recognize that we walk by faith and not by sight. We need those who serve and acknowledge that a noonday devotional is just as important as a 10 a.m. worship. Those who recognize, I don't want to be known uh, for, for, for how I sound, for, for how good I, I look in my uniform. I want to be known because I was faithful. That ministry is not about getting reserved seating in the sanctuary on Sundays. But it's about being out and about doing the real work of the Lord. So today as you drink from the dangerous and self-agonizing cup of ministry success, as some of you put a new title um, on your name, on the front of your name, 
as you stand and have the ego feed and applause of this very congregation that congratulates you. I want you to remember these words of Jesus who told some similar people, don't rejoice in all that. Remember, remember, remember that Jesus has been preparing, um, been preparing his disciples for ministry on the other side of Calvary. He, he knows he won't be with them long and he has to be certain that these 12 and the others are able to lead and preach and proclaim. And, and so in chapter 9, he gives them some words of wisdom about the cost of servant leadership. Listen to what it tells them. He tells them, listen, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but, the, uh, but when you serve the Lord God, sometimes you don't get the luxuries of all that. He, he lets them know that there are some moments when the dead just got to bury the dead. So I know you got your nail appointment, your hair appointment. Um, you got to go get a new outfit. But sometimes you got to put personal stuff aside for sake of the ministry. He tells them, any man that puts his hand to the plow but looks back is not fit to serve in the kingdom of God. Because you cannot rest on past success when there's future work left to be done. The Bible says that after giving them those lessons, he gathers those 12 disciples and adds 70 more to them. And he gives them some parting instructions as he sends them out to serve. He says, I want to give you three things to hold on to. He says, first, if folk reject you, he says, brush the dirt off. He says, number two, while you're out and about serving, don't do this for gain and money, but let the Lord reward you. And then he gives them a word that's very shocking. And, and know this, I'm not sending you, he says. He says, I'm sending you out as lamb. Where's my Bible readers at? Amongst wolves. So listen, he sends them out. They go out and serve, they preach, they, they had business meetings, they visit the sick, and, and they come back to Jesus in verse 17, and ministry has been a success to them. They come back bragging and boasting and saying, Lord, the demons, even the demons were subject unto us, and we laid hands on the sick, we, we healed folk, we served folk, and they got happy. We did devotion, and folk was happy. We preached to folk, we shouted off, we, we, they remembered our name, Lord. And Jesus says to them in a nice, calm, cool voice, he says, don't rejoice in all of that. He said, he said don't get too excited oh, Deke, about all that. I want to suggest to you, you're going to have some moments of great success um, in this call to serve you. You're going to put together some great programs. You, you're going to pray heaven down. You're going to sing like never before. You're going to visit some folk in the hospital. And when you walk in the room, their faces are going to just light up. You're going to visit the sick and the shut-in. And they're not going to want you to leave in five minutes. They're going to want you to stay a few hours. Ministry going to look good for you. You're going to have some great moments. And in those moments, I want you to remember what Jesus said. Don't get excited Whew, about all that. He, he said, rejoice rather that your name, oh God, is written in heaven. Now, now, now why would Jesus say, don't rejoice? I mean, it seems um, that, that that's what we do. We, and we should, we, should, we should take joy in the success of ministry. Jesus says, listen, don't rejoice that the demons were subject to you. The word, the word subject that the disciples used literally means to be subject to. Um, that, that, that demons have voluntarily surrendered to us. And the implication is that you didn't take authority over them. That they surrendered to you. Now, now that's important because if you remember in Luke chapter 9, a brother brings his son to the apostles and he says, my son is sick. The disciples were not able to cast out demons. Jesus says, don't rejoice in the fact that demons surrendered to you because it always don't work like that. Listen, the disciples come back talking about the demons are subject to us. Remember when Jesus said, I send you out as lamb. Y'all remember that? The, most, the, the demons are the spirits you deal with. Yeah. All right. Wolves are the people. Yeah. No, wolves are the people you got to face. Yeah. The demons surrender for a little while. Yeah. But Negroes, I mean people stay. Yeah. Now, now listen, now listen, we can't really say man right there because 
so we don't know something about wolves. So let me teach you real quick. Um, wolves are untamable. Mm -hmm. um, you, 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 you've seen lions. You've seen tigers and bears in a circus. But you ain't never seen a wolf. Ah! <laughs> wolves ain't even in a zoo. Because wolves, wolves are mean. Wolves are nasty. Wolves will bite. And can I tell you the worst part about wolves? Wolves ain't never alone. They run in packs and, and they run in cliques and they run in ministries. And the sad reality is that our churches are full of packs of wolves and temperamental demons who will surrender every now and then. But don't worry, they'll bite back sometimes. And maybe Jesus told them, don't rejoice in moments like that because it ain't always going to be easy in ministry. Ministry ain't always going to be a bed of roses. You're going to have some programs. Well, ain't nobody going to show up. That's right. You're going to preach and ain't nobody going to say amen. That's right. You're going to serve and they're going to still cuss you out. Yeah. You're going to be faithful and you won't always get rewarded. And Jesus says, listen, the temptation of the enemy is to get you to become so addicted to momentarily moments of success that you now become dysfunctional when you realize they are still just wolves. Listen, your pastor needs you to be able to serve when nobody is clapping. To be faithful when only three, when three folks show up. You, you have to show up at the hospital when the family don't even want to see you. Your, your pastor needs to trust that you can carry out the assignment when people don't appreciate you, when they don't love you, when they don't pat you on your back, won't stand and clap because you know it's never going to be like that always. Somebody shout, watch them wolves. Jesus says, listen, that stuff won't always be like that. So let me give you something else to get excited about. From the fact that your name is written in heaven. From the, that you got a home over in glory. That, that you're not doing it for the applause of people. But that when you stand before your maker, he will say, seven. Well done. I wish I had a church in here today. Serving, serving my brothers and sisters is not, as all, is not always as glorious as it looks. There are multiple uh, mean moments. And if you don't know that you have a greater reward, you will throw in the towel sometimes. You, you will walk away from ministry. Yeah, you will have certain, certain moments where you go home to your spouse and say, I'm so tired of church and church for... To You can have all this. You will say some, some four-letter words that you wouldn't normally say. Because of wolves. But when, when you know you've got another reward, it will give you some perseverance when you're dealing with wolves. When, when you know God is pleased, it will give you something uh, to, to deal with, something to hold on to while serving in ministry. And I got a funny feeling that every day of ministry, won't look as like it's supposed to look. It won't look like the picture you want it to look like. Because ministry ain't always easy. Jesus says, don't rejoice. Don't get excited yet and all that. Rather that your name is written in heaven. And when he says your name is written in heaven, that is a reference to the status of your salvation. Remember that you're always, no matter what, you're always a disciple. Always. You're always a disciple. Before you were called to preach, you were a disciple. Before you were a deacon, you were a Christian. Before you were a nurse, you were a disciple. Before you were an usher, you were a disciple. Before you got that title, you were a disciple. So, so don't allow the new titles on your name <laughs> to overwhelm you. Don't, 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 don't allow the new titles on your name to overwhelm your discipleship and your Christianity. Listen, Dr. Dr. Bernard Richardson from Howard University says, says the greatest obstacle to my discipleship is my ministry. Because ministry would get, get you confused on this road. 
Uh, ministry will make you think that because you're showing up to church that you're worshiping. Ministry, ministry will make you think that because you done cracked open your Bible in 20 years and now you got a devotional life. Ministry will make you think that because you're praying and serving people uh, uh, that you're growing in God. Ministry will make you think that because you, you, your ministry is growing, that you're growing as a discipleship. And it's easy to get it twisted to think that because you work for the Lord, that you're growing close to the Lord. And that's the way Satan grabs us and gives us ungodly leaders. Because they have lost their discipleship and their Christianity to their ministry. Oh man. So I say to you that you should remember that your name is written in heaven. Don't, don't, don't neglect your salvation. Remember that leaders worship too. Remember that you got a reason to be thankful unto God. And one of the saddest things to ever witness in church are leaders that now because you have a title and a pew. Hmm. Hmm. Because, that you, because you got a title on your name that you sit like a statue now through all of worship. Oh, man, y'all, y'all, y'all shouldn't have ate before y'all came to church. Because now they got a big title. They can't worship and praise God like they used to. Now, now because you, you're president such and such and co-chair such and such, now you too sedated. You got to sit there. Kind of how like y'all looking at me now. <laughs> the first ones that should stand up and give God glory are leaders. The first ones that should wave their hands are the leaders. The first ones that should say thank you Jesus are the leaders. The first ones that should shout hallelujah are the, the first ones to open the church door should be the leaders. Let's test it out and see how our leaders caught on real quick. Let everything that have breath Leaders, I'm going to get in trouble right through here, I feel it. Leaders should never be caught sleeping in church. Leaders should never be seen walking out of church early. No, not leaders, not leaders. Not, y'all, 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 not leaders. If anybody, if anybody should be rejoicing, if anybody ought to lead worship, it's those that the Lord has called to lead. So remember your worship and remember that your salvation only has power when you recognize that you ain't always been saved. I mean, you ain't just fell out of heaven with a halo on your head. You ain't always been saved. All of us in here got skeletons in the closet. And some of us got some meat on our skeletons. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't always you ain't always been saved. It's a sad leader in church who thinks because there is a title in front of their name that will erase the sin um, of their past. Listen, I need you to recognize that no matter what your title is, all of us in here are sinners who are saved by grace. And so don't let your title make you think you're better than anybody else. Because I come to tell you something. Whatever your title is, you're still dirt. You, you, you just now, you're just president dirt, vice president dirt, chairman dirt, co-chairman dirt, deacon dirt, reverend dirt, pastor dirt. But all of us are dirt yes, that was saved by yes, sir. grace. Yes, sir. So listen, I'm done. They come back. They come back. And at least when they come back, they got it right this time, Pastor Wub. They say, Lord... The demons are subject to us in your name. That if we didn't use your name, we couldn't have got anything done. If we didn't call on your name, our ministries would have fallen. If we didn't know the name of Jesus, we couldn't do nothing. 
if we didn't call on your name, that not a program would have went forward. Have I got a witness in here? But when I call on the name of the Lord, yeah, the God of I, Israel and the God of Abraham and Isaac, yeah, the God that sits high and looks low, that when I call on the name of the Lord, yes, demons shake and they tremble, that when I call on the name of the Lord the sick are revived that when I call on the name of the Lord bodies begin to be healed do y'all know his name what is his name somebody shout Jesus my grandma would say Jesus in the morning Jesus in the noonday Jesus will in the middle of the night so I come to tell you leaders don't have a program in your name don't have a program that don't include Jesus but everything that you do in this church should be in the name in the name of Jesus yeah why is his name so important? I'm glad you asked. One Friday. I thought y'all said this was a Baptist church. One Friday. Y'all know what he did, don't you? He died. Yes, he died. He died. Yes, he died. Stayed in the grave all night Friday. Stayed in the grave all night Saturday. But y'all help me out real quick and shout early. Shout early. Shout early. Yeah. One Sunday morning, he got up. Anybody know he got up? If you know he lives, do me one favor. Grab your neighbor by the hand and the neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know sometimes you feel like giving up. I know sometimes you feel like throwing in the towel. But squeeze that neighbor and say, hold on. Don't give up. Yeah, your name is written in heaven. Your name is written in heaven. What is your name? Seven. Yeah, seven, seven. So I dare you in 2016 to serve like you're crazy. Serve your pastor till you can't serve no more. Because I got news to tell you. Ministry will go on with or without you. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. Yeah, ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? I said, ain't he all right? If you know it's all right, do me one favor and say, I know it's. Is he all right? Is he all right? Is it all right? Say, I know it's all right. It ain't always gonna be easy. There's going to be some times you have to cry sometime. There's going to be some times you feel like giving up. But people of God, children of God, I got a word for you. And I'm in my seat weeping me. Woo! Into for night. Yeah! Joy! Yeah! Joy! Yeah!
If you want to know why I pray the way I pray, if you want to know why I sing the way I sing, if you want to know why I preach the way I preach, it's because I know, I know that my name is written in heaven. And so I'm going to serve the Lord until I die. Will you serve him? Will you serve him? Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Tell your neighbor it haven't been easy, but I still have joy. <laughs> Tell your neighbor it haven't been easy, but I still have joy. Serving the Lord pays off. I still have joy. Mm. Now, <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Oh Lord, I'm working on a well done. <laughs> That's why I keep coming to these wolves. There's some wolves every Sunday, you know that? But I got to keep on coming. I'm working on a well done. <laughs> they try to bite me sometimes. <laughs> I'm working on a well done. Anybody want to go to heaven? Anybody glad your name is written in the book? God bless you. Oh, I hear you. Oh, yeah. Sometimes everybody want to get a little hoop in, you know. Is that right, Sister Green? Everybody, I know some of you have been from the South. How many of you are from the South? You know about getting a little hoopy and you was from the South. Everybody just say, oh, yeah. <laughs> I told you you could hoop this in you. Yes, sir. I like to hear everybody get a little tune. You know, old Dr. J. Allen Caldwell, he passed the mic and let everybody get a little tune. Woo! Ay, 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 woo! I feel good. That preacher have encouraged me. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. Ain't he all right? I'm so glad that I'm serving Jesus and serving the Lord. Now, you disobeyed me. But you preach today. This man of God preached today. Won't you thank God for the man of God? Won't you? There's a man who preached. He brought a great word. 
to remind us that ministry is not about us, but it's about Jesus. And when you really call to serve, you don't have to worry about your name as long as they say his name. <laughs> to God be the glory for the thing he have done. I'm going to ask Pastor Smith to invite someone to Christ. Maybe you're here. I want Pastor Smith to come and invite you to join Jesus. May we all stand. There may be somebody here that does not know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. My brother, my sister, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, we offer Christ to you. If you do not have a real relationship with God, you're living beneath your privilege. Today, God's book of reservations is wide open. That if, in fact, your name was not in the Lamb's book of life, if you're not saved today, he'll make sure your name is on the roll. And if you're here today and you know you need to be saved, you want to be saved, this is a mighty good moment to move out of your seat and walk down these aisles. We offer Christ to you, oh, my brother and my sister. We offer Christ to you. Don't leave here the same way you came. But today, if you need to be saved, you can come down there. People, if you clap your hands and praise God, somebody may be saved today.